being in forum and being able to share candidly in a safe space with pure confidentiality gives me that unfair advantage that I have these amazing people and I'm also there for them. You know, because you have to give back. You have to give back. Welcome back to the My First Business Podcast. This is a mini episode where I take some of the best parts of my interviews with phenomenal entrepreneurs and chop it up for you like a snack. I think the cake is big enough. Absolutely. And we can all share it. Absolutely. Yeah, we all want all of it. Mm -hmm. But then again, greed is a very dangerous thing. Yeah. And then you become gluttonous and then you yeah, end up It's not up a zero-sum game, right? Like doing any kind of venture is... If you have zero-sum thinking, which I used to, I used to, I've, I've been trying to grow out of it, right? Um, I want my share. Only one person can win, me or you. And it's been, it's been a journey. I do want to switch topics. We've been uh, talking a bit about... So we've recap, we've talked about your influences early on getting into business. We've, we've spent a bit of time talking about Fika any other businesses. We can be here for another three hours because I do have questions for three hours, but I want to jump into um, the effect or the impact EO or entrepreneurs organization has had on you. And specifically, let, let me ask it this way. What unfair advantage do you think you've gained personally because of EO? Because I've heard that it's a sexy thing to say, right? As a business, you got to have an unfair advantage in the market. And what do you think that has been for you with EO? So what have I gained as an unfair advantage mm -hmm. from EO? Yeah. I think it's more the ability or, 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 or knowing that I, I'm in a group of like-minded people uh, and especially my forum, um, where eight of us, um, that they're this amazing sounding board for me, you know? Um, but that if you look at the wider group of 130 members, uh, and then of course, accelerators like yourself, which is what another 30, that we're all in this together. We're all entrepreneurs, we're all at different scales, but this ability to know that I can talk freely with confidence and confidentiality to my fellow peers and not be judged, but walk away with nine times out of 10, always a learning of some sort. So if I'm playing paddle with the EO boys on a, and girls on a, and ladies on a Sunday, and we're just having coffee, and there's always some learning or a snippet that comes out of it. Um, being in forum and being able to share candidly in a safe space with pure confidentiality gives me that unfair advantage that I have these amazing people and I'm also there for them, you know, cause you have to give back, you have to give back. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, it's been a, uh, so far an amazing journey with them, with being part of the entrepreneurs organization in, in being a member, the, the value you get from peer to peer conversations, like I mentioned, peer to peer learnings, the yeah. access to certain learnings that you wouldn't ordinarily get. And let me, let me give you a real interesting one, which I actually thought about three months ago is, would I do, would I go to a talk and spend two, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars to go and listen to a motivational speaker or do a course on KPIs and stuff. I think being part of the organization has driven me to have that better thirst for learning, whether it's for my business, my personal growth, my family, my community, whatever it is, you know. Um, we did a, a very simple thing, nothing to relate to the business. We did a little talk on cyberbullying for kids the other day. I've seen hundreds of these courses turn up on my mm -hmm. feeds, cyberbullying, you know, speak to your kids and even the school emails, and you'll read it and you'll act on it and you won't probably dig deeper. Yeah. But because I'm part of this organization, you understand that others have gone through it because they talk to you about it candidly, yeah. right? And because of that, you attend that course because you've seen somebody else's experience, you've heard about it. It's not even just about business stuff. It's just being a 
wholesome community. You know, we are one phenomenal community mm. of entrepreneurs. We're, we're a family. And, and yeah. I'm very, very fortunate that, and I think we all are as members of you, not just in the UAE, mm. yeah. but globally across the hundreds and hundreds of chapters we have across the globe. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, what about, um, let's, uh, let's dig into some of the businesses within this EO community. Which businesses? My, minus the founder. It doesn't have to be your favorite founder there. But what businesses do you find really interesting? Like when you came across someone who has a certain kind of business, you're like, wow, that's cool. I wish I would have done that. Are there any businesses that you admire uh, within your forum or just a larger EO community in general? Yeah, I mean, one is MC. Uh, Mary Christine, yeah. who mm-hmm. does Fruitful Day, I think such an innovative uh, way of, uh, you know, um, the, the more sort of healthy, nutritional yeah. way and getting it into corporates and then getting it into direct to consumers and, yeah. and then the way she's expanded her business. Um, and, and having followed her journey through the EOA program, which I was once on the, on the board there and then seeing her grow. And we did this competition sort of thing where we trained accelerators um, on how to pitch their business because we were doing a Dragon's Den. Uh-huh, shark mock, Tank. Yeah, we're doing a thing. Shark Tank Dragon's yeah. Den thing. And we actually did it. Um, and we got a trainer to come in and train. And I remember MC being part of this process and two, three of them or four of them pitched. And we did it in this very cool venue, um, which used to be in TCOM called the Barbary. Mm-hmm. Um, it had these sort of, like sort of a very sort of New York Lights loft smoke, you know, out, those yeah. low, um, sort of art deco style yeah. chairs, <laughs> yeah. uh, with the judges all sitting there and, and fellow entrepreneurs. And we had a VC who'd been invited in to come and sit and, and, and it was great. Yeah. And then seeing that business evolve, I think MCs was great. Another one in my forum is a guy called Faisal. Uh, he runs a very large software company in the world, but his passion is being outdoors and he does these conversions of off-road vehicles. So he'll take a Ford Transit van and make mm-hmm. it into this beautiful, luxurious sort of sleepover van that you can probably drive away anywhere into the desert. Thing. And he takes these really? Land Rovers and uh, this um, Mercedes military truck, right, that sleeps six people. And, yeah. and it's got a fully fledged kitchen, you know, showering facilities yeah. and oh yeah most of it's outdoors but it all opens out into this big grand and, and these are the things that fascinate me I mean, there's so many in you yeah there are just so many um unique- I bet that's that's the most fun part right like just coming across like wow you but that also that? pushes you so i was part of you yeah. when i went through this whole fika thing right i was yeah. already engrossed you know two three years into it, engrossed mm-hmm. into it and and it, it makes you think that you know would i have ordinarily thought i'm bored in the business is done, yeah. but they, your peers push and elevate you to the next level. I'm not yeah. saying you need to be better and all things. You need to be, you know, always innovative, always thinking, but you know, are you really happy in your space? And I wasn't at the time, yeah. you know, I was happy that we were doing well, but was I happy that I was, was I enjoying what I do? No, I wasn't. I think the distinction is, are you happy or are you comfortable? Yeah. Because sometimes they're not the same. Yeah. And and that was the point, a reflection point. Yeah. Uh, a very famous entrepreneur from the UAE, we did a talk with him in EO, mm-hmm. was uh, Fadi Gandur um, from Aramex. And somebody asked him, he says, Fadi, when do you, did you know that you're going to, you know, exit Aramex or put it on the stock exchange and list it and everything? He said, there will come a point in your life and you should have this realization, which I did, that they had... I, that accepting point in life that you will at some point f- fall out of love with your business. You won't hate it. You just won't have that enjoyment that don't have, so it's not so much love. Don't have that attachment. Learn mm. that you have to detach from it. Mm-hmm. And, and you do that. You have to be accepting about it, whatever it is. All right, that's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed that teaser. I think you will love the full episode. I'll leave the links in the description below, or you can head on over to my website. It's nparvez.com. Before you head off, I have just one more question to ask you. Why haven't you subscribed yet?